Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is R. Lee Ingalls, and I'm the author of a new book called Ingalls on the Prairie, The Gene and Fern Ingalls Story, which is currently available on Amazon. It's a story about uh, our parents' early years. Um, and with me today, I have two of my beautiful sisters, uh, Sherry and Barbara, and I will let them introduce themselves. Hello. Oh, my name is Barbara, and I am the oldest of eight. Um, I guess we'll be talking. <laughs> Sherry. And I'm Sherry. I am the seventh child in line, third sixth. to the youngest. Sixth. Huh? Um, just, just to be sixth, clear, you're sorry. the sixth one. Sixth. Yeah. Sixth child in line, third to the youngest. I always go by the youngest. It's easier that way for me. Um, and yeah. So just want to say my oldest son is 49 years old today. Happy birthday, Marcus. That's right. Yes. Wow. Yikes. Yes. Yikes is right. Yeah, That's he's catching up with us. <laughs> I think he thinks he's the ninth child. I know. Yes, I, and yes. I, he has said that a few times. So, uh, yeah, he has. Well, today we're going to talk about a couple of things that we remember, starting with Christmas, since it is the holiday season, and that's a very big deal for our family. So, let me know, uh, tell me what your first memory of Christmas was. Well, I'll start if you don't mind. Um, we were in Crystal, Minnesota. I was about, let's see, kindergarten age is about how old. I was there for kindergarten first and part of second grade. And the couple of the memories that I have is how big our Christmas trees were how decorated they were, even with throwing tinsel on the tree to decorate it. So mom had a rhythm with starting out with the lights, which dad did. And then um, each of us had ornaments that we could place on the tree very carefully. And then she had um, a variety of of garland that went around the tree, but we also made construction paper, red and green circles that connected to make a, a garland like around the tree. And then also um, one of my favorite memories was mom and us kids driving around the neighborhood to look at all the beautiful decorations that the houses in the area had decorated their houses and what kind of decorations. And there was nothing but oohs and ahs and look at that one, look at that one. It was a beautiful time. I s later found out that dad would put out the gifts while we did that journey, which I did not know until I was much older. And then um, one specific year, I'm not sure which year it was, somehow we thought Santa Claus had been to our house because there was um, footprints like the deer and a slide for the sled on top of the roof. And we were like, oh my God, he's been here. And we didn't know that he was going to come while we were gone. It was so exciting. I have no idea how dad did that, but it was a, it was evidence that Santa Claus exists. <laughs> I remember that too. I remember the crystal house and, and the thing that I remember most about it was that the French doors that went out to that three season porch. Uh, and we have a bunch of photos with people standing in front of those doors um, and then that living room was huge, um, and the tree was at one side, and then the sitting area was was at the other. And that's the year, the first year, I think I actually remember. And we had a big party at our house where everybody exchanged gifts, and 
um, I remember being concerned because I knew Santa was supposed to come overnight. Um, and the fact that all those gifts were there the night before, um, I thought he might think that we don't need any and wouldn't show up. Um, but <laughs> mom and dad assured us that uh, he would still come overnight. Because <laughs> you know, it was all about the toys back in those days. Oh yeah. my gosh. That is so funny. Well, Barbara, yeah. you were talking about driving around in the neighborhoods and stuff. Tyler and I used to do that when he was a baby, and I still do it to this day. I love driving around looking at the different decorations and stuff. I remember when we lived in Apple Valley, I was taking Tyler out, and of course, you know me and my sense of direction. Yeah. Anybody that knows me knows I can't find my way out of a cul-de-sac, but... Um, <laughs> we're driving around and stuff and finally Tyler says from the back seat mom are you lost <laughs> <laughs> we're about a block from the house <laughs> yeah. but just for clarity Tyler is Sherry's son yes and not, only not find her way out of the cul-de-sac but she can't find her way back in either yeah no <laughs> so, what's, so what's the first uh, Christmas you remember Sherry well, I don't really remember the specific Christmas, but I remember my Christmas gift was an Easy Bake Oven. Oh, yeah, I remember that one, too. And I loved that oven. I mean, I baked and baked and baked in that oven. Loved it. Yeah, we were all happy I about that. I think we too. were on the farm. I'm not sure. We may have been on the farm already. Um, no, I think we were. We I think it was Sheridan. I think too. I think it was Sheridan yeah. when you got it, but okay. you probably used it the most in Laconia most in, because yeah. we moved shortly after. Yeah, yeah, but I love that oven. I remember one time I was making a cake and I took a huge spoonful of lard <laughs> and dipped it in frosting and covered it in frosting and went out to the barn. And said, Monty, I'm making a cake. Do you want some frosting? <laughs> oh my Poor gosh. Monty. Don't and he took just this in. huge bite of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh he caught me gosh. before I made it up to the house. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Those yeah, are the kind of antics you guys did all the time. I didn't yeah. do any, but you yeah. guys certainly did. <laughs> yeah. Poor Monty got it from every direction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, the, yeah, the think... Christmas... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Christmas time around our house was certainly uh, festive and fun and um, everyone was in a good mood and yeah, no, it was good. I do have Another... a bunch of pictures of Christmas over the years. One thing that oh, we did, God. you know, after the timeline of the book was we would have Christmas at mom and dad's house frequently. And then we would take family photos, which started this thing about, well, we always had a thing about photos, but this paparazzi type event around photo taking yeah. at all of our events. We, we all get together in several different combinations and then all the cameras going off to take photos. Right. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was like paparazzi out there to you and then you and then you. <laughs> It's silly. Yeah. You two get together. Okay, now you two yeah. get together. And let's do this yeah. at four. At four and yes. now with mom and now with dad and now with yeah. mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> it was reiteration imaginable. Yeah. And we um one of the favorite things that has been a thread throughout our lives is dad playing guitar and us uh, singing and when we were in the Crystal House, the type of songs that he sang were just so, uh, I don't know, it just touched my soul so much. And they were Christmas songs, but there was also like songs by Johnny Cash and um, Hank Williams. And I think one of my favorite favorites was Your Cheating Heart. Um, did a lot of Elvis Presley, mm -hmm. and singing those songs was a thread throughout our lives. We would sing at almost every gathering, and Dad would play the guitar um, 
and was happy to do it. That's when he was the happiest, I think, is when he was playing his guitar and singing. And he was a good singer. Yeah, he so, was. Gathering around him on the floor with us singing, I loved it. I would just hoot to the moon. <laughs> yep. Yeah, music was always important in our family. And, and you're right, at almost every single event, uh, people were singing and the music was there and there'd be dancing. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Still is. Yeah, in fact, I'll, I'll kind of step outside of the conversation just a minute. The I don't know if you saw on, on Facebook a conversation between, um, well, Brad posted a couple of videos of him and the a friend of his, Mark, that he likes to play with, and they're singing, and at some point it's just music, and the two of them start dancing. I thought, oh, man, I uh, understand your gift here. Um, <laughs> so I posted on there, I said, yeah, I really enjoyed the singing, but uh, the dancing, ouch. Um, yeah. <laughs> Then Mark responded back and he said, that's being kind of harsh. And uh, so I responded back to him and I said, uh, no, not for me. I was being gentle. Um, <laughs> then he came back and he said, uh, well, your siblings agree. You were probably holding back. And I thought if you only knew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I knew you better, I wouldn't have been so gentle, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too funny. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, yeah dancers fun, do not. <laughs> But they sound good together. But yeah, they're definitely not dancers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told them I'd give them lessons when I come up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the talking about lessons, I mean, that's one of the other things that you often did in our later time in Laconia was dancing and mm -hmm. um, your partner, uh, Devon. Yeah. Am I say? would dance and we would just be in awe with ballroom dancing and the swing oh my gosh the yes. swing was one of my favorites that you guys did and that that we ended up doing and then another one that i was pushing a lot was the cha-cha i loved doing that one while you guys were doing your swing but that was that was a major part of my life was the dancing and the singing as a 20 year old, um, 20 plus years. And in Waconia, we had the perfect space in the basement where we had a huge, huge pool table. Was that a nine footer or something? Yeah, I think it was and nine footer. And still had enough room to dance yet. So. Right. We and throw darts and the bar area and <laughs> yeah dad's <laughs> bar with all his collectibles in the yeah. back yeah yeah well shifting gears a little bit um we also had tons of horses out there mm -hmm. for the small places it was we had what at 18 to 20 horses yep. out there yeah yep. we had a lot of horses yeah and Kurt rode the most, I think, out of anybody. Um, well, you and Kurt did a, quite a few horse shows. And then I think once you moved out, uh, Monty and Kurt did quite a few horse shows. Um, but one of my favorite memories of being out on the farm was riding the horses. Mm -hmm. You know, the horse shows we en I enjoyed doing and stuff, but just jumping on a horse and riding through the pasture or taking it out on the road. It was so enjoyable to me and so relaxing. Yeah, yeah we enjoyed I, it um, also. We started out with my quarter horse, Candy, whom I named, poor Candy. <laughs> 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 I named her as well. So obviously Candy was my favorite sweet name. And then um, I named a couple of the cows. Dominique was one of them. The other name I can't quite remember, but Kurt will be able to remember that one. And then from there, some of the names that we, like Pancho was one, I think. Wasn't Pancho, it, yeah. Um, Pancho one, and then and Pokey. Somebody, Pokey, yes. And there was a Shetland pony as well, right? Or yep, two? Macy. 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 Macy was one. Then we had Chico, yep. wasn't it? Chico was the Chico, other one. Chico, yeah. Yeah. 
Chico was the other one, yeah. Dad's horse was Thunder, wasn't he? Thunder, yeah, Thunder. The beautiful, um, was he a quarter as well? Yeah, he was a quarter horse, but red color, red mane, and red tail. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was cool for some reason. Yeah, he was the prettiest one. Yeah, Thunder was, and he was also the hardest one to train. Right. Kurt Kurt had him when Dad didn't. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Probably not a good thing because Kurt, Brad, and I, we rode the horses hard and we taught them bad habits. Um, (laughs) So... (laughs) <laughs> you're so, kids so the horses had to become kids yeah yeah <laughs> i think it was thunder, thunder that chased and joyce in the barnyard wasn't it was it thunder or it could have been could have been he was or pecos pecos was always oh, it could have been pecos, one that had, yeah. yeah angry issues yeah and pecos yeah. was what kind of horse appaloosa blanket appaloosa yes that's what i'm yeah. thinking of He's the one that we had to use a hackamore bit on because he, we couldn't stop him with just a regular bit. Uh, and he was supposed to be mom's horse, but um, the one and only time he threw her off in a ditch, that was the last time she rode him. Um, yeah, that's not good behavior. <laughs> no. No, yeah. Yeah, that was the thing. Mom and dad loved horses and yeah. dad grew up with horses. I'm not sure if mom did or not, maybe. She did. A few, yeah, maybe some at a at um, a time when she was younger, but because they were so involved and loved horses, we became really involved. And when I got Candy, I was just in seventh heaven because she was a beautiful quarter horse. Um, I, I I don't she remember. Was a big she horse was a too. Yeah, she was something like sixteen hands or 17 something like that um i think normal size is 15 hand hands but she was just pretty to stand next to and take a picture with yeah Um, but riding her was very gentle she was a gentle horse yeah she was picture perfect (laughs) yep Yep, she was a pretty horse. First one that we got, and she came to us unbroken. So Kurt, Brad, and I—I um, I, I think I wrote about it in our in the book, trying to break her uh, and get her saddle and riding ready. <laughs> well, you did a good job. She came to us. To yeah, <laughs> we finally did. Well, I didn't but, you know, know she came to us unbroke. Yeah, yeah. She, um, you know, we we're a bunch of city kids that were thrown kind of in the mix without really much direction, and we we managed to get it done. On a okay. hobby farm, that's not even you know a full blown farm, but right. we made it work with pigs and cows, cows and, and horses and chickens galore. Chickens. Yep. 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 Yeah, and a you huge know, hay barn. <laughs> Yes, mm-hmm. yes. We had lots of fun in that. Yes, we huge, did. Huge entertainment right there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I left Waconia um, right after graduation. So a lot of things that Lee and Sherry can talk about, I may not have been a part of. However, when my oldest son, Marcus, was born, starting I don't know around five maybe six seven somewhere around there he would go to Waconia to be with his aunts and uncles for the summer or a few weeks at a time and at that age he just thought he had a bunch of fun friends to play with and be playmates with and totally took on this whole persona for my brothers and sisters that decided he was a doll to throw around yes Yes, that's right (laughs) that's exactly what he was he was our little baby yeah he would um I have pictures of him when he was very young more like two or three Um, but I don't know that he was staying with us at those times I think you might have been visiting and that's where he came out there but yeah there's I remember when he'd come out and stay for a few weeks during the summer Yeah. yeah 
Yeah, and he loved it. Every bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. He was a fun little little kid. Yeah, he was. So we went from well, I went from Waconia into the cities, but um living in North Minneapolis for me was a big transition in my life when I went into high school, North High, and um, had, I think the school was maybe 30% African American at that time. Um, And it was the first time then that I had experienced um, being in, in a different culture environment versus an all white culture. And that experience kind of determined the rest of my life in many ways um, because it was such a profound experience in a good, very good way as far as I was concerned. But it took my journey away from the experience of my brothers and sisters. And so often my contact with them was the family gatherings which I cherished and my children and taking pictures and all the laughter that was created from the memories of experiences. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the move from North Minneapolis to Waconia, um, you know, there was a difficult move for us older ones, certainly because, you know, at that point we were, we were in our teens um, and Uh, pretty well resolved to where we were Uh, but even for you Barbara it was more difficult because it was we moved out there the year before your senior year so you really only spent one school year out there Um, and one of the uh, questions that came back to me from someone who read the book was you know the way you talk about Waconia and the farm I thought you lived there all your life but and I thought well no I mean for me it was more like four years which doesn't seem like a long time, except that mom and dad lived out there far past uh, when I actually lived on the farm. But um, if you look at the book as a whole, we moved around quite a bit. So the only house that we lived in for that long uh, during the time period of that book is the farm. So it's understandable that we would see that as as our home, even though we didn't, by by measure of anything else, it wasn't that long. I think I spent my ninth and 10th grade on Sheridan. Yeah. And when I went to into 10th grade, I left home and moved in with a friend who had two children and stayed with her for almost a year before I ended up going out to Waconia. You guys were already there and established. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So what else do you want to talk about? Or should we save that for the next episode? Yeah. Well, ta- well, I don't know how long these are supposed to be, but talking about the music in our family, I just want to put in here, Lee, that you were my piano player. You were the one that played the song that I love to sing, which I believe was called The Cherry Tree. And I made you play it a lot because I wanted to sing it a lot. And I cannot find that song specifically. It must be an old ballad, I think. And so I'm still hunting, trying to find that song. And I'm sure I don't have the correct title, but that's what the song was about. Yeah, I'll have to look for it. You know, the sad thing is um, when uh, at some point mom gave me all the sheet music that I had when I was a kid. So I had all of it. Um, oh. uh, but it was in a low cabinet during the flooding uh, oh. in Harvey. So all of it was gone. Uh, so I've been, I replaced some of it, uh, but I haven't played piano in so many years that um, I've only replaced those songs that I'm really passionate about learning again um but the yeah the one uh funny thing about um 
playing was you had a particular key that you sang in and that's what you wanted to sing in. So almost no music was written in that key. So <laughs> I had to read the music and trans transpose it into the right key. Uh, at the same time. Yeah, I, I wish, I, mean, I know, but all I needed was some kind of piano and I was ready to go. And oh, it didn't matter funny. if it sounded right or not. I sounded right, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and when you're that age, that's easy to do. Trying to do that now at my age would be, ooh, it'd be a I little think, uh, I mean, I'm sure I was, you know, in ninth, maybe eighth grade or something when we were given piano lessons and you were the only one that stuck it out. Um, but I remember that piano, it was beautiful. Um, upright, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think Margo um, took it actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah, she did. And it stayed at the house with, well, actually, it was in her last house, wasn't it? In the basement? No, no, it got destroyed. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't yeah. remember seeing it at her house either, but yeah. So those are some of the fun stories for me around music. And I was in choir throughout all my schooling. The first class mm -hmm. I looked for was choir. Um, when I graduated in Waconia, I was one of the top singers. Unfortunately, because of the Miller girls, I couldn't <laughs> be the top singer. They were the richest family in Waconia and owned and paid for almost everything. So whatever they wanted, they got. But um, we did a musical in my senior year there of Tell It Like It Is. And oh my gosh, if we could find the music to that, that would be another good one. It set the tone for my entire life. Tell it like it is. <laughs> no secret. <laughs> up front, center. This is what it is. <laughs> That's the way it's going to go, whatever. So, yeah. Funny. We know the uh, Miller family owned the Waconia Patriot. They own the paper in town. Um, and the Patriot uh, interviewed me the last time I was up there for, um, I, I didn't realize they had already published a story about the book, but they interviewed me while I was there. And I asked them whatever came of the Miller family and the twins and he said you know the name has come up before but the paper was sold so many years ago and he never worked for them so he oh, didn't okay. know whatever came of them yeah okay yeah. yeah well they were a big deal in my one year there and I didn't yep. like it. <laughs> to say <laughs> drama I can't remember the name of the play that I was in um I'll have to find that because that was one of again a major um, play in history as well as for me and they got the lead in everything instead of me yes. and so I just you know they were a thorn for me for one year but I, <laughs> I tried I tried my best to get in there first so yeah, I'll find the name of that play because that's another biggie for history mm. We know who reached out to me um, is Pam Zanger. Remember Pam Zanger? Oh, yeah. She was she our was neighbor. She the youngest of the two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, in Laconia. Yeah. 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 Oh, the, Pam and okay. Deb Zanger, they lived there in the corner. Uh, yeah. Right. Before the, the dirt road, yeah. Uh, she reached out to me, and I uh, looked, and I forgot. She married one of the Elling uh, brothers. Right. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. The youngest know. one. Yeah. 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 So that was kind of interesting. We haven't really communicated, but she reached out to me on Facebook. And uh, so I accepted her friend request. Oh, yeah, good. Very, cool. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I think we have covered it for this episode. Um, so thank you for joining me. Um, I will edit this up and then put it up there. And I'll send it out to you before I uh, put it out for public view yes. so that you can... You can make sure you're okay with it. All right. Okay. Thank you, brother, well, for doing yeah. this. I really yeah. appreciate your time and energy, and it means so much for yeah. our family. It's fun. Yeah. It's been fun. 
Okay. Okay. Love, Love you. you all. Love, Love you, you both. Bye. Bye now.